What's another health system that you want to talk about in the context of how excess fat can damage it and how we can start to unwind that and actually activate that health system? All right. I'm going to tell you one that's uh, not very well known, which is people um, know stem cells by mostly associating with driving to the driving to the corner of a strip mall and getting their knees injected or their elbow injected, right? To me, as a researcher, that kind of stuff is not ready for prime time. But our body is ready for prime time. We are primed with stem cells from the time we're born. We got about 75 million stem cells that are just left over from developing in a womb, and they get stored in our bone marrow and in our other organs and our skin. And even inside our body fat, these stem cells are called out to help repair us from the inside out throughout our lives. So we are actually continuously renewed where we, we regenerate. And this whole idea that um, humans don't regenerate, but salamanders and starfish can is wrong. Another myth that's being overturned is that humans do regenerate. We just regenerate slowly. We can't grow back an arm or a leg or a tail, but we can actually grow back our liver. We can grow back our lungs. We can even grow back parts of our brain, which is really, really amazing. And definitely we regrow back our, our nerves. The thing about our stem cells in our body fat that can affect our metabolism is that the, our body fat does contain stem cells. And remember I told you, if you have too much energy, too much fuel, too much food, uh, too many calories, but, but your body's going to have to stuff the, the fuel into the, into the fuel tanks, so the fat. If, you don't, if that's completely loaded up, now you got to create more fat. You know what it creates it from? Stem cells. Mm. All right? So, so our stem cells and our fat are there as reserves if we need to actually create more fuel tank. But it turns out that you can do some good things with those um, fat adipose cells as well. I read about um, some research that is being done. I took part in some of this as well. Uh, cardiologists are working with plastic surgeons in liposuction to remove fat and to identify and isolate out the stem cells from body fat. So here's how it works. Do liposuction, you get this uh, jar of yellow stuff, which is uh, fat. And you put that, pour that into a, a tube and you spin it in a centrifuge, which makes it go round and around and around. And, with, and what happens when you spin it like that is that the cells, the stem cells will clump to the bottom. The fat will float to the top. You stop the machine. It's not spinning anymore. You pour off the fat and the stem cells are what you have left. Cardiologists are taking those stem cells and they're putting it with a little saline, a little salt water, and they're injecting it into the heart. Mm. Okay. And because it's not in the fat, it's now in the heart, it will create new heart tissue. All right. And uh, one of the um, remarkable things uh, in my book I talk about is that they're doing the same thing with spinal cord injury. Now it's research only, but it actually is in humans. Um, there was a really famous case of a, uh, somebody who, a young person who injured his uh, spinal cord at the neck level became quadriplegic. And um, what they did is they actually took his body fat spun it down exactly the same way, got the stem cells, and then took his stem cells and injected it into the spinal cord, and he was able to regain movement, which is really, really amazing. I'm telling you this to show you how powerful stem cells are. And if you imagine them in the heart or in the spinal cord, that might be something that the medical community is going to be able to use in the future. That's very promising. But that just shows you how powerful the stem cells can be inside the fat itself. You don't want to be triggering those stem cells to grow new fat by eating more food and overloading your system, those guys can really fuel up your fat really fast, which is why sometimes when we see massive weight gain, you know, like it, it and quickly weight gain, it's partly due to these stem cells. So what's really important is that you can tame these stem cells. There are foods that can actually, you can eat that will actually start to divert the stem cells by telling the stem cells, hey, buddy, don't be making more fat. Let's, let's, stay, let's stay calm. All right, let's just stay quiet. Don't act out. Don't make more fat. And that's really an, another example of a health defense system that on one hand could be really powerful to help uh, recharge, renew certain body parts that we might want to have, but we have to tame it. Body fat is not bad. It's good. You, it, but what we want to do is we want to respect it, but we do, do need it to be tamed. We cannot allow it to actually go uh, haywire. Let's just do a little teaser here. We're going to get into foods in a second, but what are a couple of foods you're talking about taming that body fat and working with those stem cells and helping them understand not to work against us? What are a couple of foods that you have found that are well, important there? So one of them actually is tomatoes. 
Um, the lycopene in tomatoes, so there's a bioactive called lycopene, it's a carotenoid, um, turns out that uh, found in tomatoes actually, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, do a lot of things to harmful body fat, to fight body fat. But one of the things it does, it actually uh, tames the stem cells. So it basically tamps down the ability of fat stem cells from going haywire. That's important. That's like sending that, 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 uh, crazy kid in the classroom who can't stop making noise and being disruptive. That's like sending him over to the principal's office, getting him out of the space, making sure he's not causing trouble. That's what well, tomato is one of them. Olive oil actually turns out, um, which contain lots of uh, bioactives. And I, I think that's what I'm so excited about as a research scientist. Not only is it the food, but we're beginning to identify the specific substance in the food that can be beneficial. So um, hydroxytyrosol, oleocanthin, all these types of bi bioactives uh, in in uh, olive oil, for, which is also present in whole olives, by the way, and and it's present in olive oil, but it's also present in olive water. Olives are mostly water, not oil. So when you press olive oil, it turns out that the, the, they, they throw away the water right now and they, they collect the oil. But the water's got a lot of these polyphenols. One of them, hydroxytyrosol, which also makes it into the oil uh, a little bit, actually will tame your uh, stem cells in body fat. So again, this is an example where uh, the foods that we eat actually uh, not only surprisingly actually can help us fight body fat. I, that's one of the things that I was so surprised at when I started to set out to do this research. You assume that when you're eating food, you're going to grow fat eventually, right? Here, actually, there's actually substances in food that can actually help you tame and even lose fat. You know, in the premise of this book and in the introduction, you're basically taking the reader on a journey that you didn't set out to write a diet book. And it's obviously an anti-diet book, right? That's why it's called Eat to Beat Your Diet Click in the show notes, by the way, pick up a copy. It's an amazing read. Everybody that listening on audio, on YouTube, please pick up a copy. And one of the things you saw from your first book is that people were eating according to the education that you put out there, which isn't about, sure, you get us excited about individual foods. Here's what olives can do. Here's what pomegranate juice can do. But you are not there to advocate necessarily for any one way of eating or any one food, you're just showing us the power of whole foods and when we include them in a good diversity inside of our diet. Now, the thing is that even though you didn't think that you were writing a weight loss book, a lot of people went on that eating program and style from the first book and they were reporting and they were writing into that, hey, like I'm not trying to restrict calories, I'm not trying to lose weight, but I'm noticing that I am losing weight. And that was like... That was really an amazing experience for you to have. Big surprise to me. And in fact, I'll, I'll confess something uh, that uh, most people don't know is that when I uh, wrote my first book and I turned it in and it became very successful, New York Times bestseller, I had in the back of my mind a little concern that people would become so uh, enamored with eating all the foods that I talked about that they might gain weight. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a medical doctor, so I get concerned about this obesity epidemic. And I would be receiving these emails, you know, um, thousands of emails, tens of thousands of emails, people thanking me for writing the book and then talking to me about how more empowered they feel and, and how much healthier they felt. Uh, some people said, oh, you know, I was able to get off of my medications. You know, like I got lots of really good feedback. Uh, and I was, I was, but I was, my radar was on for people that might say, but, I was waiting for the butt, but I'm getting weight, you know, because I'm eating so much of the good food that you actually are talking about. I never got that. What I got instead was I distinctly remember somebody wrote in and said, and you know what? The, the other the other benefit I got from eating uh, to beat disease is that unexpectedly, I started to lose weight in ways that I could never lose before. And I got that one letter and I thought, well, thank God he didn't gain weight. And then I thought, wait a minute, that's a little bit weird. How could you be eating more food and losing weight? So I kind of brushed it off. And then I got more, maybe another dozen letters like that, uh, or notes, emails like that, people reporting that they were actually losing weight. And by the time I got to like 20 or 30 of these, uh, I thought, wait a minute, there is actually something going on. I'm a researcher, right? So we pick up clues by observing it. And I thought, what the most unusual thing is that by eating food, and these people are telling me like that now they're like really eating, uh, you know, foods to fight the five health defense systems. 
how is it that they could be eating food and losing weight? Um, and so that's what literally triggered me to begin looking more deeply into this. It was really just the next part of my research. Um, actually, I was doing research on metabolism, but I now I wanted to dive in to see what the heck was going on. And so when we started to take a look at the bioactives in these foods, because as a researcher, a scientist, that's what I'm wondering. Is there a mechanism? Like what could possibly be in these foods? The lycopene, the hydroxytyrosol in olive oil, lycopene in tomatoes, uh, the elagic acid in chestnuts. You know, um, I started to discover that in fact, all of these bioactives started to also make sense to me because they were fighting body fat. They were taming the stem cells. They were preventing fat cells from loading up with extra fuel. They were actually um, uh, igniting the brown fat, uh, turning on that space heater to burn down energy and increasing metabolism. And then when you actually really took a look at the uh, studies that were uh, looking at specific foods studied in clinical trial, clinical studies, isolating the food, all right, and just giving the food to people, you started seeing that they, it was shrinking waist size, or waist circumference, and they were losing body weight as well. And so all of a sudden it became clear to me that there was this whole other field of foods that actually can activate your metabolism, burn down harmful body fat, and against what we I told, I, we talked about at the very beginning of this, which is this new science of the metabolism, these four phases and the harms of extra body fat, I realized that there was something that people had to read about, which is what are those foods that you eat that we know what's inside them can burn harmful body fat and unleash your inner metabolism. That was worthy of a book. So that's why I actually wrote this, Eat to Beat Your Diet. And I'm so glad you did because there's so many things that we forget about or we don't take advantage of that are there in front of us in our cabinet or easy to pick up in the store that can be a part of our health system. And really this goes towards a larger idea and the larger idea, which again, you write about so eloquently inside the book, which is that it steps us into the love of food. There's so much fear around food. And listen, I'm going to be the first person to call myself out and even maybe past guests because we live in such a complicated world and nutrition science is very difficult to do. There sometimes are foods that people isolate or categories and there are maybe sometimes legitimate and maybe sometimes sensationalized concerns around those foods. You know, it could be gluten or it could be this thing or that. And yes, go back to the Goldilocks idea. Too much of something, you know, not enough of it, you know, the right fit in the middle. But really a lot of that has contributed to this fear of food. Right. And people constantly feel like they're going to make the wrong decision. Right. And this book is about stepping back into the love of food. And backing it up with some of the science. You know, you just mentioned something, which you were talking about foods that help you, uh, your your fat not get overactive. And one of the ones that you talked about was green tea. So what are one of the compounds or molecules that are part of green tea that make it become one of these foods? Sorry to interrupt, but memory loss is on the rise. And that's why I've created a free guide that you can get right now featuring the top brain boosting foods that you can include into your diet starting today to help you combat this. I've worked with a few of my friends to feature five foods in this free guide. And guess what? A couple of them will probably surprise you. Make sure you're one of the people that focuses on keeping your brain sharp by downloading this guide today. Just click on the link below or scan the QR code and I'll send you the guide right away. All right. Well, you know, who hasn't heard of the benefits of green tea, right? It's been sensationalized, right? And uh, to your point, I think that uh, in the modern world, uh, because of all this complexity, human nature tends to either create a hero or a demon. Uh, that's demonization or heroization, right? Green tea tends to be in the hero side. But for me, what I really try to bring to the forefront and into focus is that the science is actually trying to teach us exactly what it is that's in the tea. So we know tea has polyphenols, they're called catechins. We know one of the catechins is called EGCG. It's epigallocatechin 3 gallate. But don't worry about the fancy Latin scientific names. Let the scientists kind of deal with that. But there's a polyphenol in tea, 
catechin that's actually really, really good for you. Not only does it cut off the blood supplies to help starve cancers, not only is it anti-inflammatory, uh, not only does it help protect your stem cells so you can regenerate from the inside out, the, the, the fiber in green tea and some of the catechins, catechin itself is actually a prebiotic, helps to nourish your, nourish your gut microbiome, take your gut bacteria, make it happy. It's antioxidant, good for your DNA, stimulates your immune system. So again, you know, these are the attributes of one of the only one of the substances that we know about in green tea that actually helps our body stay healthier. It turns out when it comes to your body fat, the catechin, the same substance, actually fights white fat. So it actually helps you um, actually lose some of the subcutaneous jiggly stuff. But more importantly, it actually helps you lose visceral fat the harmful baseball glove fat that can be trapped even inside a skinny body. That's the stuff that chokes your organs, that grows fast. That's uh, the fat on the back of your tongue that we talked about earlier. Uh, so the bottom line is that um, green tea drinkers just metabolically are healthier. And here's the other thing about green tea. Not only it has a catechin, but it's actually just brewed in water whether it's hot water or iced tea, iced green tea, you wind up hydrating yourself as well. And so again, you get multiple benefits and hydration also, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, but um, a cup of iced tea, a glass of iced tea has got water in it. Not only got the catechins, but it's got water in it. Turns out water itself turns on your metabolism, turns on your brown fat. And it's and basically when you drink iced tea cold or, or a glass of cup of cold water, it actually it gets into your stomach and there's a temperature gauge in your stomach that senses that's cold. And because it's your core body temperature, what we think happens is it triggers this, this gauge to turn on your metabolism to try to warm up the water. It's kind of like a like a like a hot water thermos. It wants to warm it up and it turns up your metabolism to turn up your metabolism and activates your brown fat. Your brown fat needs that fuel to create the, to be the space heater. It draws down energy from your harmful fat, burns away some of your harmful fat. So again, you know, like th this is this is how this is a new way of thinking about our food. It's actually working our inner. The food is working our inner workings on our behalf of our metabolism, and by making really really smart choices, we can actually allow ourselves to unleash our inner metabolism. You broke out a whole section. And you talk about how insulin, blood insulin, is related to the conversation about metabolism and is connected to fat. Set that conversation up and then there's a few things that I want to tease out instead of it. YouTube, if you enjoyed what you just saw, keep watching for more great content on how to improve your brain and your life. People are either born with a fast metabolism or a slow metabolism, right? And so the typical thing you say, my sister was so lucky she was born with a fast metabolism. She's skinny <laughs> as a stick, she can eat anything. But me, I was born with a slower metabolism. That's wrong.